And today we're going to be talking about the Zygarnik effect. That's not some sort of weird alien. Mm, I had to ask. If you think that's strange, you should see how we pee. It's this cognitive effect that psychologist Bulma Zygarnik uh, noticed when she was in a cafe that a waiter could recall an order that they had not delivered better than an order that they had. It's almost like when something is left incomplete, your brain has increased processing power to recall it and use it again. This effect uh, creates a cognitive tension in your mind that persists until the task is complete. So in today's video, we're going to be getting into what are some ways it can be advent advantageous to you. That's a hard word. And then ways that it can detract from you. And then some actionable things that you can do using this effect. So let's get into the pluses first. If you start something, this Zygarnik effect will give you that inertia you need to actually continue going and complete that task, or at least get a lot further in the task than you initially anticipated. So if you can convince yourself to just get going, I'm only gonna do this thing for one minute. I'm only gonna study for five minutes and then I'm going to stop. Just creating that initial inertia you will go a lot further in the task than if you hadn't started at all. You're up 2-0. What's the story? Are you not happy or you're only half happy or? Stay to be happy about. You're up 2-0. Job's not finished. Job finished? No, I don't think so. Okay. The other big advantage to this effect is that your short-term memory for task and progress is very, very good. Have you ever uh, had someone tell you a PIN number or a phone number or uh, what they wanted from the store and you go complete that task, you go write down that number, you input that PIN with perfect recall, but an hour after you actually do it, you can't remember. It's the same way uh, a lot of people went through school They'd study really hard right before the exam, cram it all into that short-term memory, spit it all out, and then two weeks later, they can't even remember what the name of the textbook was. Uh, another positive thing from this effect is that you can use it to shape behavior. So you can actually make yourself more memorable to people. So if you have a cliffhanger or if you leave something incomplete in your story or you say oh I'll get back to you next time I'll tell you the rest of the story later it's going to put you in that person's mind hey I need to remember to talk to them about this next time I see them hey they didn't finish that story hey I I want to know how that ends you can actually use this effect to influence people and to become more memorable. So those are the pluses, but there are some significant deltas or some minuses from this effect. This effect means that your brain is really bad at multitasking. If you leave something unresolved, your brain is actually switching back and forth between that unresolved thing and the thing you're attempting to do now. So you really want to focus on a task and complete it and then move to the next task and complete it. And if you don't do this, you're just going to be doing both tasks poorly. A another thing that is a huge minus is that your long-term retention is going to be more poor unless you actively try to recall something multiple times and get it out of that short-term memory space and into your long-term memory retention. 
like I said, this is what you would see with the exams when you were in school a lot of times. The other big minus from this is that any sudden life events, imagine like a sudden death in the family, a uh, uh, car crash where you lose a friend or a sudden breakup with someone that you're in a relationship with. It's going to hit a lot harder than if you saw this coming, if there was a period of time for you to expect the result and have it happen because there's that unresolved piece in your mind of what could have been. It's this effect looping that thing in your mind because it's incomplete. This is why uh, most TV shows, they end on a cliffhanger so they can keep you tuning in, make sure that you come back for the next season, make sure that you tune in for the next episode. They want you to have that tension built up in your mind. Hang on! There's this really cool children's story called Somebody Loves You, Mr. Hatch. It's about this main character, his name's Mr. Hatch, as you might have guessed. He lives a lonely, secluded life where he doesn't really interact that much with his uh, neighbors and community. One day, he receives a card and some candy and it says, Somebody Loves You. So Mr. Hatch, with the Zygarnik effect, he needs conclusion. He needs to figure out who loves him. So he goes out into his neighborhood and his community and he starts doing good deeds for others, hoping that he's going to discover who this mystery person was that loves him. And one day, the mailman finds Mr. Hatch and says there's been a mix-up. He tells them, that he was never supposed to receive that letter. It was supposed to go to someone else. And that's how it ends. No, no I'm just joking. That's not how the story ends. So Mr. Hatch goes back to his secluded life, living alone, and the community misses him. So they decide that they're going to throw a surprise party for Mr. Hatch. And one of the characters is holding up a sign that says, everyone loves you, Mr. Hatch, because of all the work that he did in the community. So this kind of this cute story showing how this incomplete uh, action of this uh, card and candy led to all this positive effect in Mr. Hatch's life. How do you use this effect in your life? How do you actually take action knowing that this effect exists? So the biggest thing is write things down so you can clear out that space in your mind. If you can write the task that you need to do down, then your mind can relieve that tension and you can move on to another task unencumbered and at full capacity. The other thing that you can actionably do with this effect is don't, uh, don't leave arguments with loved ones unresolved. If you leave an argument unresolved with a loved one, then this effect is occurring and they are looping on the argument until they reach resolution. A lot of people's felt relationships happen because they don't achieve resolution in their arguments. They just get to a point where they just both stop arguing, but they didn't actually resolve anything. Another way you can take action on this effect is to bask in the positive. So the same way your mind can loop on negative things, you can cause it to loop on positive things too. So if you're planning a vacation, what you wanna do 
is you want to give a lot of runway from the time that you initially planned the vacation to actually going on the vacation. Basking in your vacation and the potential good times that you're going to have with your family and friends pays way more dividends than the vacation itself, which may only be a couple days or a week long. You can take half the year and you can go back and forth with your friends and family about how amazing it's going to be. So you can extend the positives in your life that much more. Today's video is in my mindset series. So the biggest step you can take on your financial journey is actually believing in your own potential and investing in yourself. A gym cannot be polished without friction and a man cannot be perfected without trials. So investing in yourself is the most important thing you can do and probably the hardest thing you can do in setting yourself up to be successful. And that's the video guys. So hopefully you got something out of it, got some actionable things that you can use this effect for in your life. And if you like the video, please like and subscribe. If there was something that you found really interesting or if you found something that really resonated with you, please leave a comment below. Uh, and if there's something that you'd like me to make a video on in the future, also let me know down below. Uh, thanks for tuning in. I'm going to continue to crank out the content on investing in real estate and uh, the market. And then we're also going to continue on these mindset videos so we can improve as our portfolio improves. See you next time.